Okay, hello again. I'm doing a video at a request from Martin. One of the one of uh, fellow employees up there at work. He's in California though, versus Texas. Um, he was wanting me to give a little rundown on on this FT1A Touch, how to get it to connect via um, USB. So I'm going to give you a little deal on that. I might show you a few things around it. I don't know. I've done a video, I believe, on FT1A Touch before. I don't know if I put it on YouTube or not, but. Anyhow, I'm going to kind of give you a walkthrough. And this this is the FT1A Touch. And sorry about the bad video. I have just a regular webcam. I need to get a better camera. And basically, this is their all-in-one IDEX, all-in-one PLC and HMI. This HMI has a PLC integrated into it. Those are your inputs and your output terminals down there on the bottom. This is a relay version of it. It has relay outputs. Uh, transistor inputs and relay outputs. Anyways, these things are like, I think this one's like 12 IO or something. Something like that. Anyways, they're not very big, but they're really handy for little projects. We use them at work on a couple of machines. We've used them so far, and I like them. This port right here is the port you're going to want to plug into the program. That's a, I believe it's called a micro USB. Anyway, that is the port, not this port. You don't want to plug into this USB port. You want to plug into this USB port. This big regular USB port here is mainly for loading a program via a thumb drive or something like that. So you want to plug into this port right here. Okay, and I've already got it plugged into my computer, so I'm going to plug it in. You want to make sure you have power on, which these will program without power, by the way. But it's better to have power on. And like I said, the video, excuse the video, when I turn this on, it's probably going to have a pretty good glare on it. Okay, but anyways, that is, that's the FT1A Touch. Maybe I can get a little angle there and get a little where it's not so much of a glare. This already has a program on it. It's a program we did for a job at work. Anyways, it's got a few things on there. I'll kind of show you some of them. Can. I think I've already went over this actual program a little bit somewhere before. <clears throat> okay, to use the FT1A Touch, you're going to use this program right here that I rename my programs to make them easier for me to find FT1A Touch. I know this one is for use with my FT1A Touch. This one is for use with my HG4G touchscreen or HG3G touchscreens. This is my ladder program for just a regular FC6A um, PLC. Um, basically, let me see if I can find the regular name. I don't even know if they're really named the same on here or not still. Yeah, NV3. That's right. Uh, Win IO NV3 is what you use for the FT1A touch. That NV2, that's for older model um, PLCs. You don't use that. I mean, older model HMIs, that's like for an HG, I think it's a 2G or something like that. I've never used one. Anyways, NV4, that's for the HG 3G. NV3 is for the all-in-one FT1A Touch PLC. So that's what we're going to be open. Up here, I have it named FT1A Touch. Okay, we open that program. It'll give us a little dialog box that popped up over here. It does that to me all the time. We'll open it up. Let me get it over here to where you can see it. Okay. Now, I still have the camera in the background, but we'll put it on to where you can see what's going on here first. Okay. I have it plugged in to the back of my FT1A Touch. Okay, and is what you want to do, once you have it plugged in the back, you go to COM Setup. Make sure this is on USB. Communicate with a touch. You're not trying to communicate with no output input slaves or none of that stuff. For external memory, you want to communicate with a touch. By default, is it is at this, this already. Okay, and you're going to click OK. All right, once you do that, you know your needs is target info, just like with an HG3G. This right here is a quick way to tell you that you are communicating with it. It target info, it automatically populates everything in there. It's going to tell me what model I have, the runtime version or the firmware version in it, how much memory space is available in it. The, this is the name of the project that's on it that's in the PLC itself right now in HMI. 
Okay, it gives you just give you some more information on a lot of the stuff you can actually change inside the program when you get into it and want to, you know, change names around or whatever. Okay, so we know we're communicating with it. Okay. Now I want to. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna upload this program from the upload is upload from the PLC to my computer. It's kind of to me ass backwards. It's, I would think it would be uploading to the PLC for some reason, but I don't know. To me, you just got to remember, upload is from the PLC to your PC. Download is from your PC to the PLC. So we're gonna basically pull the program. All right, I'm gonna upload. Let's answer yes to all that, and you'll see the screen going crazy. It's gonna pull everything up. It's pulling everything out of this PLC. Okay, give us a second to populate everything up there. Okay, here we go. Here's our screen list over here on the left. It's got all of our different screens, pages. Okay. This is customizable like I've shown before in other videos, I believe. You can go to view. You can turn off stuff. You don't want this clutter across here. You can take the device addresses off. These little white boxes, those are commands. You can take those off if you want. And you can just go to different pages and manipulate them, whatever. And then once you double click, it'll tell you what that is. That is a, a multi-button. Bit button, pretty much, is what it does is it turns different addresses on and different addresses off when you press that button. For instance, we'll double click on that one. All right, see that resets M000. Okay, this one right here resets M006. So basically when this button gets pushed, it does everything in this that I have in this list right here. It executes every function I have in that list as I have it written into the list and you so just there's another one sets that sets M50. That's that one button. I'm just kind of giving you some off the wall information, some stuff you might use later down the road. Because <clears throat> as FT when they touch, when you get done doing your HMI program, playing around with it, and getting some of your stuff, you're gonna want to go back and forth anyway. But when you do your HMI program, you just go right here to this little looks like a normally open contact symbol. It's a control function. Hit that. Okay, control function is going to pull up this screen. This is the ladder program that is built in to this NV3. Okay, this is the actual ladder program within that PLC. That we read in there is a control, a, a, a parts kicker actually is what it's for by timing. Timing's got an air motor on it. Air motor of sorts anyways. And you can just toggle back and forth between here and here like this, or you can actually shrink the screens down and have them side by side if you want to make sure you know your addresses. Okay, I got this address here. I want to see what it is over there, you know, in the PLC program, whatever. Back and forth. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna act like we're downloading, even though we didn't do anything to the program. You cannot download from this page. It won't let you. Okay. You have to be over here in the HMI program. Go to online, go to download, okay, all right, make sure all of this says all, download, it will give you some process, this just to show you what the HMI is doing itself, uh, no, you can't see it because of the damn glare on it. But anyways, it's actually booting up and loading everything in at the same time. And once it gets done, you'll have everything finished. Okay, download complete. That's it for that. And you can also, just for your knowledge, if you want to connect Ethernet, so all you have to do is click Ethernet, same thing. But to do Ethernet, you have to make sure that your runtime system is current. You have to make sure your firmware, and you have to do that through the USB for the first time when you program it, you have to update your firmware. Ethernet will not work 99.9% .9 of the time unless your firmware is up to date. 
but you can select Ethernet once you have your firmware up to date and you can communicate Ethernet. And then this PLC right here in the bottom of it has an Ethernet port that you can plug into to go between your PC or your switch or whatever and do your programming through. Anyway, okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, I know it's kind of short. Let me know and I'll help you if I can. If I can't, we'll find somebody that can. And we'll see you on the next one. I've got another one coming up before too long, by the way. I'm going to do on building a web page and remote monitoring via the internet so you can be at work or school or whatever and you can see what your PLC you might have controlling your security at your house is doing from some other location. I'm building that one up. That's going to be a little bit longer, maybe a two-part even video. But I'll get that going. That should strike some interest in a few people because it's kind of cool. All right, see you next time.